Good morning, everyone. My name is Yi Chen He. Today, I'm going to present my work about using deep learning for measuring bird plumage color. The digitization of nature history collections has been started for a while. Digitized specimen enable researchers to make non-invasive, easy-to-reuse measurements. But due to the large amount of digitized specimens, it is time-consuming and tedious to measure them manually. These are measurements of a citizen science project about quantifying bird plumage color. Manually measuring hundreds of thousands of these images can take a long time. Because my background is computer science, I'm trying to explore if computational method can help with the phenotypic measurement. Our lab created a dataset of bird photos that covers more than 7,500 species. There are more than 100,000 images. The photo has both visible and UV value. Each specimen has three views. We use segmentation-based label to measure the whole plumage area of bird. 5,094 photos were manually labeled as the training set of deep learning. Deep learning is a new subfield of machine learning. The key feature is that it can make accurate predictions on images. A well-trained deep learning model can segment images accurately. This example shows deep learning did an amazing job on segmenting human, motorcycle, and the background. The difference between deep learning and classic segmentation method is that deep learning requires training set, and it takes slightly longer time to segment images due to the training process. On the other hand, classic segmentation such as thresholding doesn't need to be trained and can segment images quickly. We would like to find out the performance of deep learning and classic method on our dataset. During the model training, two metrics, precision and recall, are used in evaluation. Precision is the proportion of predicted area inside the plumage area. Recall is the proportion of plumage area inside the predicted area. And the last example, shows a good segmentation that has both high precision and recall. And these are the precision and recall of deep learning and four classic segmentation methods that used in many research. As we can see here, deep learning scored 95 for both precision and recall and significantly outperform other methods. Also, deep learning has less variance, which make it very robust on very difficult instances. Here are some examples of classic segmentation method. The yellow area failed to do the job, while deep learning did a fairly good job. Deep learning managed to detect plumage area that have similar color to the background, for example, this one and this one. It can also defer bird specimen to museum label, for example, this one and uh, this one. The deep learning result looked very promising and it took deep learning less than three days to segment on all images. UV is perceived by birds and is an important signaling mechanism of them. But a dataset of bird plumage UV that covers a large range of bird species hasn't been built yet. We built a world bird UV dataset with the help of deep learning. Two UV matrix, average and peak UV were calculated using UV value of segmented pixels. Then we used our dataset to explore UV signaling of 4,500 passerine bird species. We visualized phylogeny of UV signaling for both average and peak. The preliminary result shows that the back of bird has higher UV than the belly. Male has higher UV reflectance. Birds from high forest dependency tend to have high UV. Further analysis are needed. But our dataset shows the power of exploring UV signaling of world bird. To sum up my talk, deep learning can segment plumage area accurately and automatically, and it only requires manual labeling a small training set and train the model. It has a good future in phenotypic measurements on digitized specimens. It can be used on other measurements on other biodiversity datasets. This I use deep learning to predict points on this data set. And this one, I predict points on littorinian shells. 
At the end, I'd like to thank my supervisors and lab mates, and thank you for your attention.